Synopsis. Warning. This synopsis may contain spoilers, based on a true story. We see various shots of a city in central India. Five-year-old Siru, Sunny Pawar, is standing on top of a hilltop, looking at a swarm of butterflies. His older brother, Gadu, encourages him to come along. Gadu sneaks on top of a coal train and steals coal. Siru joins him. An officer yells at them and Saru jumps off. After the train goes through a tunnel, Gadu applauds Saru's leap. Saru and Gadu go into the village to sell the coal. We are told it's Kandwa village in the year 1986. Saru sees hot peppers for sale and notes that he wants some. Gadu tells him he will have some someday. At the moment, they are only able to get some milk and some money. They return back to their village and find their little sister, Shekala and their mother Kamla. Kamla asks where they got the milk. They don't give her an answer. The next day, Kamla leaves to collect rocks which she does for a living. Gadu is going to leave for a week to help lift bales of hay and Saru asks him to take him along. Gadu first points out that Saru has to stay with Shekala but he tells her their mom will be with her. He then tells Saru it's too heavy for him to lift bales of hay so Saru goes outside and lifts various objects including his bike Gadu finally agrees to let Saru come along. They walk amongst the train tracks to the next city. They get to the nearby train station late at night, which becomes vacant after the last train of the night arrives. Saru says he's tired and wants to sleep so he lays down on a bench. Gadu comments that Saru is too young to be able to endure night work and he shouldn't have brought him. He tells Saru he's going to check on the work site and says he'll be back for him. Gadu steps down into the now empty train tracks, with a giant water tower in the distance, while Saru goes back to sleep. When he wakes up, his brother isn't there. Saru walks the train yard calling out for his brother. He looks around a train. The next morning, we see Saru has crawled onto the train and fallen asleep. It barrels through India. He calls out for Gadu, assuming he must be on the train, but no one is there with him. Saru quickly learns there are bars on the window and no way to exit in the compartment he's in. The train passes through a city and he screams at someone to help him get out. An Indian child just stares at him, unmoving. An announcement is made at train stations that the train is out of operation and not carrying passengers so the train will not stop. When the train finally does stop, it's in Calcutta, 1,600 kilometers, 1,000 miles. Away from Saru's home, Saru is swarmed by people boarding the train as he steps off and calls out for his brother. He waits in line to speak to the sales agents at the ticket booths, telling them he is trying to get back to Ganesh Chile. They don't know where that is and they only speak Bengali so Saru is pushed out of line by the other passengers. Now stranded in Calcutta, Saru tries to sleep in the train station tunnel with some other homeless children, but in the middle of the night, Officers come and chase them. Only Saru escapes because he's small enough to fit through a gap in the gate. He wanders through the city, alone, with a piece of cardboard to sleep on. A woman named Noor sees him and quickly learns he doesn't speak Bengali but Hindi, which she speaks as her second language. She takes him to her home and gives him some food and some soda pop, which he's seemingly never had before. He goes to bed and she tells him a friend named Ra wants to meet him. Ra visits and he cuddles next to Saru, telling him he's going to take him to some friends. Before he exits, he asks Saru to stand up and looks him over. He tells Noor that Saru is the exact type of boy that they are looking for. The next morning, Noor tries to feed Saru again but he no longer trusts her. He runs out of her home before all can return to claim him. Saru continues to wander the streets of Calcutta. He finds a large spoon in a pile of debris and keeps it. Saru sits across from a calf where a man can be seen through the window, eating soup. Saru copies his mannerisms which amuses the man, who goes outside and approaches Saru. In the next scene, Saru is being questioned by the police. They ask if Saru knows the name of his village but they don't recognize the name Ganesh Chile. They ask if he knows the name of his mother and he says her name is Mum. They can't fathom how far he traveled so they assume he lives near Calcutta despite not speaking the local language. A picture of him is taken and circulated around. Meanwhile, Saru is sent to an orphanage to live with other children. 
He attends school on site. One boy is troubled and begins hitting his head against the wall and at night, they pull him from his bed and punish him outside, while the rest are supposed to be sleeping. To comfort themselves, all the children begin singing a song to themselves. Skipping forward a few months later, it is 1987. A woman comes and tells Saru Thiev circulated his photo in the Calcutta newspaper which reaches 15 million people but no one has been able to identify him. They don't realize he's so far from home. They are not confident he will ever be reunited with his family so a nice Australian couple is going to adopt him. Saru and other children that will be adopted are taught English, focusing on items that they'll encounter at the dinner table. They learn the words fork, spoon, a knife, then salt. Saru cheerfully identifies Pepper. He is given a shirt that says Tasmania, where he'll be moving to, and is put on an airplane. When he arrives in Australia, he meets his adopted parents, John Brearley, David Wenham, and his wife, Sue, Nicole Kidman. Saru is a bit shy at first but very open to living with the Brearleys. He is fascinated by the refrigerator filled with food. At dinner, he happily identifies Pepper which charms them. Sue gives him a bath and he plays with bath toys for the first time. The three of them play cricket on the nearby beach. Two years go by and now they adopt a second boy from India, named Mantosh. But the young Mantosh is very standoffish and requires a lot more patience than Saru. We now flash forward to 2010, 24 years after the story began, an adult Siru, Dev Paddle, swims in the ocean and then joins his adopted parents at dinner. Siru now speaks English fluently and has an Australian accent. The family has invited Mantosh to the restaurant but he doesn't show up, which is typical for him. Siru stops by Mantosh's home and tells him not to avoid their parents. They have a brotherly bond despite Mantosh being troubled. He teases Saru about his upcoming course on hotel management. Saru attends the course and notices Lucy, Rooney Mara, a fellow student who seems similarly taken with him. She explains, in another class, that she is studying hotel management to provide people with service that makes them happy. Saru tells the class he's trying to secure a profit for himself and everyone laughs. After class. Saru and Lucy notice each other when they both walk to a party, on opposite sides of the street. She does a silly dance and the two end up arriving to the event together. The other kids ask Saru where he's from and he says Calcutta. All the students are having a good time and then Saru goes in the kitchen and notes the same red peppers he told his brother he wanted at the beginning of the film, which causes him to have a flashback. He becomes upset and when he rejoins the group. He admits he isn't really from Calcutta but had gotten lost and couldn't remember the village where his family was. He says that he often thinks of his mother, brother, and sister and wishes he could find them. Someone suggests he research how fast trains go and estimate how many hours he was on the train to figure out how many miles he traveled. That can limit the train stations around Calcutta that he searches but someone else notes it would take a lifetime to search all the train stations in India. Another girl tells Saru about Google Earth, a new site at the time which allows users to search the world through satellite images. Saru begins doing the math to calculate how many miles from Calcutta he was, which allows him to draw a circle of possible locations he should be searching. Meanwhile, Lucy and Saru begin dating and he brings her home to meet the family. But when Mantosh shows up, he is rude and makes Lucy uncomfortable. When Saru chastises him for this, Mantosh goes crazy, hitting himself at the table and causing a scene. Saru continues having flashbacks of his limited time with his biological family he hallucinates seeing his mother on the beach. He eats at the local food court and imagines his brother there, eating off people's plates. Other parts of his childhood still remain a prominent part of his life. Like a scar he has on his face we learn that he once carried a watermelon home and, because holding the fruit up shrouded his vision, he was hit by a motorbike, causing the contusion. Lucy points out that even if Saru was able to find his former home, it's no guarantee his family would be there and then the search would never end. Nonetheless he keeps obsessing over trying to locate his family. He looks on Google Earth and sees a water tower by a train station and flashes back to the one we saw at the beginning of the film. 
he continues scanning around and sees a train track running over a bridge, which reminds him of a similar spot by where he grew up, yet none of these places are the village he was born. The lack of closure regarding his childhood causes Saru to spiral downward emotionally. Lucy and him go to a party but he is distant and leaves her by herself. Outside, she is angry at him for abandoning her, telling him he needs to stop obsessing about finding his family. Saru tells her he can never overcome the pain of knowing his mother and brother have wondered about him every day for 25 years. He breaks up with her, citing that he is too preoccupied with things to really give her the attention that she needs. Two years later, in 2012, Saru is still trying to locate his family via Google Earth. He has drawn possible routes via the train tracks on the giant map with a circled radius but still he's not able to identify his village. John, Saru's adopted father, comes knocking on his door but he doesn't answer. John shouts that he knows Saru has dropped out of school and just wants him to talk to Sue and him, but Saru remains shut off and doesn't reply. While Saru is in the down escalator at the mall, he passes Lucy, going up. They reunite and he tells her how his search is progressing. His parents now are invited to his home and he reveals the map that he's become obsessed with. They are relieved to know that that is what was preoccupying him, and it wasn't personal when he didn't talk to them for long periods of time. Saru visits his parents' home and has a conversation with Sue, asking her if she ever wishes she could have had children because then they wouldn't have had the baggage her adopted Indian sons do. She reveals she could have children she didn't adopt him because she had no other choice. Sue explains that she married with John because they were of like minds both agree there were too many people in the world and they'd rather be parents to someone who needed saving. She talks of her own childhood with an abusive father and a vision she had at 12 years old of an Indian boy needing rescue, and how much she loves Saru and Mantosh. Even though they've been challenging, she is glad they are her sons. One night. Saru is on Google Earth looking at all the places inside the giant circle he's pinpointed as his possible village. He then starts spanning outside of the circle, where he had never observed before and discovers a hillside which he flashes back to as having stood on, watching butterflies. The first time we see him in the film, he scans across the map and sees a river that he used to swim in. Then he sees the train station with the water tower behind it. This leads him to the village that he used to run home to every night. It's a suburb called Ganesh Tale. He was mispronouncing it as a child calling it Ganesh Tale but it confirms that he's found the right spot. Saru gets too excitedly tells Lucy that he's found his home. Saru travels to Ganesh Tale in hopes of finding his mother, sister, and brother, even though it's been 25 years since he knows they last resided there. Now a full-grown man. He travels down the same pathway that he used to, as a kid, until he gets to the Ganesh Tale village. He makes his way to where he used to live and sees it's now used as a pen for goats. He bangs on the wall, having a panic attack. A woman that resides there tries to talk to him but now he can't speak Hindi, only English. Saru shows her the picture of himself as a child, that was taken by the police in Calcutta. A man that is multilingual approaches and Saru tells her he is looking for his mom and his siblings, Gadu and Shekhala. The man's eyes widen and he begins to walk away. Saru watches him go and then the man calls for Saru to follow him. The two make their way through the village until they stumble upon a group of women walking home. One of them is an older woman that is clearly his mother. He shows her the picture. She recognizes him as her son. They hug each other and cry. He is introduced to the now-grown Shekhala. Saru's mom says she always held hope that he was alive. He asks where Gadu is but everyone becomes somber. He is told Gadu is with God. Postscript tells us that Saru's mother remained in the village so that he could find her again one day. Gadu died in 1986 when he left Saru and walked on the train tracks. He was hit by a train, hence why he never returned to claim Saru. He also learned he had been mispronouncing his name his whole life. His name is actually Sheru which means lion. And then we see the title of the film. During the closing credits, we see footage of the real Saru introducing the real John and Subrirly to his birth mother in the Kandwa village. The end of lion synopsis.